Hi, yeah, Martin here and welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all well and you've had a really good few weeks in your workshops creating some really magical stuff. If you follow my um, my weekly or my va <laughs> my vaguely weekly video log, then you will have um, you will have discovered that I've got a couple of larger large scale projects lined up for before Christmas. But yesterday I was having a bit of fun with um, the Paul Howard sphere cutting jig, and I turned this little owl. He's lovely. He's so cute, and I don't normally do cute, but a lot of people on Facebook asked if I could do a video about it. So. Paul, I hope the video does um, does the jig and your instructions justice. His head is about four inches in diameter, which is 100 mill millimetres in English. The base is about two and a half, three inches high and about two inches wide. So without further ado, let's get on and uh, see if we can create ourselves a cute little owl. So the first thing is we need to get this roughed down to um, a cylinder and then put a tenon on one of the ends. Now it's round and um, in the chuck on its tenon, I've measured the diameter to be 95 millimetres or three and three quarter inches, something like that. And I've got to make a few marks um, on the on the piece. The diameter, sorry, yeah, the diameter of the piece is 95 millimetres, which is there. And then half of that is 47 and a half, which is about there. And mark that there. So the sphere is gonna come out of this end, right the way around there. And that gives me a little bit of space on the left here next to the chuck to turn it down so I can make a, a little spigot so I can get the jig as far round as possible. So next I need to make the spigot down there so I can get the, uh, get the jig round. Now Paul's instructions are great. They come with um, uh, information on cutting the corners off. Um, to save a whole load of time um, when using the jig. So I can see 95 millimetres, I need to cut off 27.811 millimetres, so we'll call it 28. So I need to measure 28 millimetres in from either end and 28 millimetres down. So I'll use, I'll use the vernier calipers for that. So, about there, and about there, and about there, and about there. And now I can take the bowl gouge and cut from this line down to, down to that line there on both ends. Now the jig itself is really quite simple to set up. Um, it's got a plate that bolts onto your lathe bed um, and then it has the, the radius, I suppose, or the diameter cutter or the radius arm. And then along, along there are different holes for however large a diameter uh, sphere you want to turn. It's got riser blocks that you can set to the height of um, your spindle. And um, this one, this is the spare one, and it's just, a, just about three mil too high um, for, this, uh, for this lathe, but it does have this really handy um, locking collar, which you can then raise or lower the, um, the actual cutting rig itself. And then here, running through here is a, is a quill mechanism with a six millimeter carbide cutter on the end, which has its own lock, spindle lock on it, a distancing knurled 
nut on the end. So if you want to turn spheres of the same diameter, it's really easy. And then a lock here so you can turn it to get into awkward angles and stuff. I've lined everything up as best I can. Everything's all square. So now all I need to do is just start to turn the sphere. Now Paul's instructions do suggest essentially turning between centres. Um, but the way I have very quickly discovered I prefer to do it is to do it just off the one spigot um, on the end with the rest of the piece um, mounted in the chuck. So very simply I'm going to start making the first few cuts. I'm going to bring the tailstock up for a little bit of support until we get quite close to the end. There's a little bit of flex in it but that's okay. Glass is on of course. Then I'm just going to take this series of very light cuts just to get the sphere underway. And I am going to have to take the tailstock away. And there's the sphere cut. It's really, really, really simple. Um, I think I left the spigot just a little bit too narrow, so I was getting a little bit of vibration. But now that's that's the job done for the um, for the jig, and I can now sand that down, sand that most of the way, and then I can get it ready for the vacuum chuck to um, sort out the. Uh, sort out the spigot after I've parted it off. Now I'm well aware that the method I use to turn the sphere is not the same as uh, Paul Howard's instructions on how to use the jig. I'll put a link in the description to his instructional video as it is absolutely brilliant and it goes through his instructions much more concisely than, um, than my this video. Um, now the the sphere has been finished down to 400. That noise you can hear in the background is the compressor. So I've finished most of the sphere down to 400 grit and attached it to the whole fast vacuum chuck, um, which is this system here. Uh, it's really good. I've only used it twice, or rather this is the second time, um, and I'm really pleased with it. There's a little bit of play um, in the chuck. Now I don't know if that's a little bit of leakage somewhere on my part setting it up but there's a little bit of leakage but it's good enough to um, just turn off the the little nub there from where I cut off cut off the sphere. So with a face shield on I'm going to cut the uh, cut the end of the sphere off and then finish the remainder of it down to 400. You need to follow the ghost and rub the bevel all the way around the sphere to make it as good as possible. That's about as good as I can get it, I think, and I'm quite happy with it. Now I can finish that down to 400, and then we can get on with um, with the rest of our little owl. 
So for the next step, you're going to need some kitchen towel and a colour to stain the outside or to dye the outside of your sphere. I'm going to use my intrinsic earth and I'm going to spray directly onto the directly onto the piece and start to rub the colour in all round. It's a lovely mucky job this. You could even use your hands to smear the to smear the colour around actually that makes it even uh, even more fun. And then just give it a, a light going over with um, with the kitchen towel just to wipe off any excess. Now we've got to leave that, we've got to put that aside to dry for a little while so that's a good excuse for me to go and get another cup of coffee. And now the, um, yeah, now the seal is dry. No, now the colour's dry. I can start putting some um, some sealer on it. I'll put a couple of coats of uh, sealer over it just to make sure that it's nice and nice and smooth, and that will further help the vacuum. Now, if you have a look at the original owl, you can see um, that his eyes are nicely centered in uh, in the pattern of the grain. So that's going to be the next step to, to mark out the eyes. And it says in the instructions to set a pair of dividers um, about the, uh, just under the diameter of, sorry, just under the radius of the piece, which is what I've done. Um, and then you need to decide where you want to put the eyes, but you've got to get them fairly kind of central. So I'm going to look at the grain pattern and look all around, look all around the piece, and I think there. I think so. I'm going to get them nicely centered. I'm going to put a mark on that side with the point of the compass, and a mark on that side as well, just about there. Then the next step is to draw circles. that slightly overlap um, each other, about an inch diameter. So I'll draw those on so they overlap. You might be able to see, if I catch it in the light nicely, you might be able to see there where they overlap. And the sanding sealer has gone off. So next what I need to do is put, uh, is use, um, Where's it gone? I'm going to use a live centre for this just to help keep it keep it steady. So it's back to the vacuum chuck and I'm going to put the live centre in one of the little eye hole marks just there. And wind that in and hopefully Now that's not quite lined up. So ease off the gas as it were. Okay, that's lined the eye up as best as I can. So I'm just gonna push the tailstock in just to give it a little bit of support. And then very carefully, just start to flatten that eye out. Now I want to dish the eye in so it sits back, just like an owl's eye really. So I need to take the tailstock away in order to take off this nub and get a little bit further down. And this is a really delicate really really delicate operation this bit.
there we go. That's one eye done. Now, we've got to start thinking about the owl's actual eyes. Yeah, I went onto um, eBay and I picked up a box of um, a box of eyes. Now these are quite small, and these are the ones I used in the original. They're about 10 millimeters in diameter, and uh, in a variety of colours. And they're just teddy bear eyes. But I also found, whoops, a couple of others. Now these are the eyes we're going to put in um, today. Um, slightly bigger than the others and they've got a little stem on the back that we can use to uh, push in. Now the actual stem itself is 12 millimeters long so I'm going to line it up Ugh. oops and then very carefully bearing in mind there's a little bit of play drill down um, probably 13, 14 millimetres. Right, I've done both his eyes um, and I didn't put I didn't make sure after the first one that there was a good enough seal on the second eye um, and I didn't turn the suction up enough on the vacuum so it kind of bumped jumped off the owl took flight and um, he's got a little bit of damage bit there bit there a bit there a bit there so um, I've decided to modify him slightly. I'm going to give him kind of a, a bit of a feathery sort of, um, sort of design with a Dremel, um, purely to, uh, to hide the damage. There's a little bit there as well, but I can't really do too much about that. Um, but if you can see, I think you can see a pencil line running from the center between his eyes, round, on both sides, which encompasses the damage. So I'm going to take a Dremel and um, I'm going to uh, Dremel round there to give him kind of a bit of a, I don't know, sort of a feathery, um, a feathery kind of look. Gutted, 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 gutted. So this is a slightly extended version of the, uh, of the L project. Safety glasses on. Ah, right, finally, um, nearly an hour's worth of texturing there. And uh, here he is. Well, this is the back of him uh, at the moment. And there he's round the front, and we've uh, done a good job of uh, hiding, hiding the damage. Now I can turn the vacuum chuck off, and now I'm going to put another coat or two of sanding sealer on, because I haven't sealed the eyes yet. And now while the sanding sealer is drying off, we can look at uh, we can look at doing the base. Right, and then for the base, I've got a piece of London plane. So I'm gonna temper the base, um, just taper it down just a little bit, round it over, and then scoop out the inside to fit, uh, to fit the owl's head after I've made a mark where I want to part off. Now the base is done, I've cleaned up the bottom. I have formed um, a beak for, uh, for our little owl out of a piece of uh, London plane and I just need to sand it down carefully. 
just to give it a little bit of shape. Now because it's going on a curved surface, where it's going to join, I want to put a little bit of a curve just so there's as much surface area of the beak in contact with um, the owl's head as possible. Kind of like that. You can't see it very well because my finger's in the way. Right, I'm going to get um, I'm going to get some Hampshire Sheen high gloss, and I'm going to rub it all over him. Well, all over the um, the polished surfaces, where. Um, where I've just put uh, a little sanding mark, I'll sand that back in a second. Such a shame about the little bit of damage on him. Switch heads in the uh, Jacob's Chuck to the polishing mop. Mm -hmm. And give him a nice buff up. And then just sand off that little mark here, where his no, where his beak needs to go. And now I can glue the beak on, put in the eyes, and then the project will be all finished. Here is the owl all finished. I'm so pleased with how it has. Uh, turned out the eyes are in, the beaks stuck on and the widow's peak uh, texturing has come out really well. I'm very pleased with that despite the fact it was, um, it was damaged. The, um, the owls, the, these owls, you, you can turn their heads and you can change their mood as, um, as you see fit so you can make them look you know sort of a little bit expectant or sad or quizzical you know you can you, you, you can play with it and yeah, they're lovely, they're, they're lovely. It was a joy to turn of course. And here is the first one that I did yesterday. Let's just put them up there. So there we have a brace of uh, owls or owlets. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe. And down the left hand side here are a couple of videos. One is Paul Howard's instructional video on using the sphere jig and the other one is about turning a sphere between centres. So that's it. Thank you very much. I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.